Hello, all you wonderful people out there in the dark. Thank you again so much for checking in. It's that time again. Uh, idioms, part two. Why idioms are great. Um, you all know what they are, and I think you all know how much I enjoy them. I thought it was time to share another round. So let's just get right to it. Uh, first on the list, read the riot act. Read them the riot act. This actually comes from uh, 18th century uh, England, and it actually was legitimately a riot act that would be read to a crowd of people that, that were larger than 12 or 13 and seemed, I guess, threatening. Uh, a constable or, or someone representing the county or city would come out and would, uh, read the riot act, and I guess at the end of it, they, they'd have about an hour or so to disperse, and when uh, the constable or, or whoever returned, there'd be trouble if they were still uh, wandering around, I guess. Read the riot act. Uh, one of my personal favorites, the rule of thumb. This actually, again, also dates back to well, 17th century uh, England, and it's it's actually the rule of thumb. Uh, a judge decided that your thumb, this was the largest diameter stick that you could beat your wife with. Anything bigger, you'd be in trouble. But if it was the diameter of your thumb or smaller, you'd be okay. Kind of the good old days, I guess. Uh, I don't know if larger men had a harder time getting married. But that's the rule of thumb. Uh, number three, humble pie, eating humble pie. This actually harkens back to the Middle Ages. Uh, after a big hunt, the lord of the manor would, would have a big feast, and obviously the lord would get the best meat, and the people uh, in his party that had a lower status, well, they would get pie that was basically filled with the entrails and the innards, um, kind of like spam, I suppose, today. But the pie would have entrails and innards in it, and that pie, what that entrails and innards was known as, known as was umbles. It was called umble pie, which morphed into, of course, today, humble pie. Uh, and eating humble pie is what someone of lower status would do. Nothing, I guess, if someone walked by, you would want to see that on your plate. Spill the beans. Now, this actually goes back to ancient Greece. And um, the beans were how the, the Greeks would vote for uh, their, can, their candidates for government. A white bean for yes, drop it in the can, I suppose, and a black bean for no. Well, occasionally, I imagine there'd be a drunk Greek stumble in, drop his beans, and would knock over the cans or the pots, spilling the beans, uh, letting that candidate know how many black or white beans he actually had in his uh, tin can jar or whatever. Anyway, spill the beans. Pull out all the stops. We've used it a lot. I've used it myself. And uh, for all you organists out there, you already know what this is. But on a uh, pipe organ, on the council, there are all these knobs and they're known as stops. So when the organist pulls out all the knobs, it allows the, the instrument, him to be able to squeeze as much volume uh, out of that, that instrument as possible, pulling out all the stops. Kind of cool. Uh, kick the bucket. This one's kind of a sad one, but basically uh, slaughterhouses, once upon a time, or maybe still today, I don't know, they string up a cow Sometimes you've got to adjust and do different things with the animal before you slit its throat. And the bucket is intended to catch the, the blood. Well, as you're positioning that cow, they tend to fight for their lives and sometimes they kick their rear legs out or front legs out and they would kick that bucket. Or after their throat was cut, just their natural nerves and stuff would often kick the bucket. Hence the term kick the bucket. Break a leg. Break a leg comes from Germany right around World War I. Uh, as many of us discuss, it's always funny to tell somebody in the acting community or, or wherever we wish them luck, we say break a leg. But the reason it's done that way is because once upon a time, people believed wishing someone good luck would tempt evil spirits. 
So if you wish them bad luck, that would keep the evil spirits away. Kind of reversal of uh, fortune, I suppose. Uh, I'm not sure if this is an idiom, but it's interesting. The best man at a wedding. During feudal times, there were lords that weren't too happy about people getting married. And at times they would try to break up these marriages by sending soldiers to that wedding to, to kill the groom. So what the groom would do is get a bunch of his pals, his groomsmen, um, and have them there at the wedding in hopes of uh, dissuading, or if there was an attack, uh, having a bunch of guys there to stop uh, the fight from happening. The one standing closest to him was known as his best man, I'm guessing the best fighter. Um, that's another one. Uh, oh, one of my favorites. People get this wrong all the time. Blood is thicker than water. And I know what you're thinking. Well, Ryan, that's, you know, family first. Blood is thicker than water. And that is absolutely 100% wrong. The full phrase is actually, the blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb. And what that basically is referring to is the, the, the warriors um, who shared, who, who who shared the battlefield and oftentimes shed blood together um, in battle became blood brothers. And they have a stronger bond than even biological brothers, the, the um, band of brothers. Uh, but a lot of people today, we always say, well, blood is thicker than water, thinking it refers to they're my family. Absolutely wrong. Um, son of a gun. Now, this is kind of an interesting one. We, we Today, it's kind of, you know, just like, oh, that son of a gun. It's kind of a term of affection, I suppose. Where they believe it stems from is on long voyages, sailors sometimes would have to bring their wives. And sometimes wives get pregnant or are pregnant uh, when they're on the ship. And really the only place to have any kind of, um, I guess, privacy or seclusion, because not all boats had uh, berths where people could have any sort of real privacy. Uh, the, the only place that had any real seclusion was between two cannons. And that's a lot of times where a woman would give birth and the term son of a gun, assuming it was a boy, that's what the boy uh, would be referred to. Well, he's a son of a gun because he was born between two cannons on a ship. Um, what's another one? We'll do one more. Uh, take the piss, which becomes down the road, uh, take a piss, which always seems strange, right? Because you're like, well, that's normally what you're doing. You're leaving piss, not taking it. But it actually, it actually stems from the textile industry. We used to use, uh, stale urine to dye, uh, um, textiles, our clothes. And some poor bastard had to go around and collect, uh, the pots of stale urine and bring it back to the, the, the textile manufacturer so they could uh, soak all the clothes and stuff in urine. Which when you think about it, that people must have smelled horribly. Uh, obviously this is long before gain and tide and other things that made your clothes smell summery fresh. Just imagine putting on a, short, a shirt and it smells of stale urine. I don't think that's something that just goes away right away. But anyway, the, the guy that would have to go and, and gather up all of these pots of piss, the term, you know, oh, you're the guy that takes the piss, it was considered the worst job. Take the piss becomes uh, take a piss. See, isn't that interesting? I love these things. You know, we use them all the time and no one, no one really thinks about them. I, I, at least I don't think. I guess I do, so maybe others do. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed those 10 idioms. We'll do another one here soon. Uh, we'll do an idioms part three uh, tomorrow. I will be taping. We're heading back to House of the Mouse uh, for the first time in well, well over 400 days. So we'll see how that goes. But um, in the meantime, in this world, when you could be anything you want, you be kind, you be humble, you be forgiving, and you guessed it, you be melting snow. Bye-bye.